gentlemen, those of you who are at the plenary session have some idea of uh, my take on the world, I'll give you a, a few further thoughts. Let's uh, have a hypothesis. The hypothesis is that as the global balance shifts from west to east, and also let's not forget from north to south, international institutions should also change. Now, the world since 1945 was quite different from previous worlds because it was not organized along the lines of empire, but along the lines of international uh, multilateral organizations, uh, not least the United Nations. Uh, but within the family of United Nations organizations, uh, a number played an important role. Uh, in the economic sphere, the International Monetary Fund and the World Bank, and perhaps more importantly than them, the World Trade Organization. In the realm of military organization, uh, NATO, the North Atlantic Treaty Organization, uh, was as dominant uh, as any of those in the economic sphere. So, hypothesis, these institutions will change to adapt to the shifting balance of economic power. China, India, Brazil, Nigeria, the most populous countries in the world will play a bigger role within these organizations. And the declining Western powers uh, that now seem overrepresented in them will play a smaller role. That's a hypothesis if we're talking about how the global order might be reset. We know from the performance of NATO since the end of the Cold War and the performance of the European Union uh, in that period too, that institutions of this sort can change, and quite radically, change their purpose, change their membership, grow larger, and alter their internal decision-making process. The antithesis is that vested interests, for example, within the United Nations Security Council, will resist change. Because why would they vote themselves from positions of power into positions of weakness? Uh, if there were time, I'd say more about the peculiar nature of the UN Security Council, which accidentally uh, gives China the kind of role that China would be demanding if it didn't already have it. So let's imagine that these institutions don't change. Then what? Well, one can imagine the institutions withering and becoming less important. But if that happens, then what? Do you end up with a world in which alternative institutions take over, or a world in which no international organizations in fact play a significant role? And that's really what I want to explore in my remarks now. You can imagine an alternative set of institutions coming to the fore in the post-Western world, to use uh, Dominic's phrase, or the post-American world, to use Barita Carriers. A Beijing consensus is already uh, being talked about in China. The Shanghai Cooperation Organization exists partly to institutionalize that. In the realm of uh, the Muslim world, new organizations are also uh, to be seen. The Conference uh, of Islamic uh, Countries being perhaps the most important of these. And then let's not forget the altogether new forms of institution uh, that we associate with the advent of the internet. In an alternative economic, or rather alternative international order, it's social networks that displace uh, the post-1945 institutions. So we end up in Twitter world, or on the Facebook planet, living on Google Earth. I want to suggest to you in the two minutes, 42 seconds remaining, uh, that that is a less likely scenario than the scenario of a world without international order. A world that reverts to the pre-1945 arrangements in which balance is achieved by a mixture of conflict and diplomacy between great powers, some of them discernibly empires. I think this is a more likely scenario when I look at the conduct of China in the world today. That China has a, a, an instinctive tendency to operate bilaterally. It's interesting that the Chinese like to negotiate 
with France. They like to negotiate with Germany. They like to negotiate with the United Kingdom. They never ask the Henry Kissinger question, who do I call when I want to speak to Europe? They just don't speak to Europe. And that is also true when one looks at China's performance around the world. China deals bilaterally with the various African countries that it is de, fa de facto colonizing right now, like Zambia, which I recently visited. As Europe disintegrates, to pursue an argument I began earlier today, so Germany will pursue its own national interests with far less regard uh, to the notion of European integration we associate with the generation of Helmut Kohl. As the United States retreats from its role as a global hegemon, America will put its own interests first and think less in terms of the international organizations, which in any case have a very low reputation in the eyes of the American electorate. Just ask Americans what they think of the United Nations, if you don't believe me. In Latin America, Brazil will be the dominant player. It doesn't have a particularly clear vision of a Pan-American role for itself. And in the Middle East, I think we will see a struggle to take over the American role between, well, one could put it this way, Sunni and Shia powers, or one could put it a different way, between the Ottomans and the Persians. So my suggestion is perhaps a typically historian's suggestion. This new world order of which we began by speaking simply won't emerge at all. It won't so much be a reset world order, but a deleted world order. And it won't so much be a post-Western world, as a post-order world. Thank you very much.